Welcome to lecture 11-1. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the hypothalamus. So we've mentioned many of the different regions of the diencephalon already, especially the thalamus. We talked about the subthalamic nucleus and the subthalamus and its relation to the basal ganglia. Now we're going to be talking about the thalamus. The thalamus is the um, central uh, processing region for the autonomics. The parasympathetics and the sympathetics originate within the diencephalon. Uh, so we've seen this slide before and all the different pathways involved in the diencephalon. So now we're going to be focusing on the pathways involved with the hypothalamus. Uh, so the mammillary bodies are part of the hypothalamus, so the fornix is still involved uh, in this uh, lecture. We're going to talk about the uh, septal frontal uh, portions of the cortex, the telencephalon, and their connections to the hypothalamus. So these limbic regions uh, inform the hypothalamus and our autonomic outputs. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the pituitary gland, some of the anatomy and a little bit of the functionality of the pituitary gland, along with the amygdala and the hippocampus and how both of those input via the stria medullaris or uh, stria terminalis, uh, my apologies, and the fornix uh, from respectively the amygdala and the hippocampus. So uh, as an overview, the hypothalamus has a number of different functions. It's involved in the autonomic and, uh, outputs uh, for our body. So the nuclei that control those autonomics are located within the hypothalamus. They're, the hypothalamus is not one uh, big mushy thing. It has distinct nuclei within it that do distinct functions. Uh, those uh, distinct nuclei also regulate the release of uh, hormones uh, from the pituitary. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. Also, uh, the limbic system informs the hypothalamus and vice versa. Uh, so there are connections from things like the amygdala and the septal nuclei to the hypothalamus and from the hypothalamus. So we have uh, a few major uh, inputting regions uh, to the hypothalamus. Uh, so we'll call those afferents, and that's the hippocampus, the amygdala, uh, and the septal area that I we've already mentioned, septal area, uh, limbic functions, uh, input into hypothalamus via the cortico-hypothalamic tract. Uh, the hippocampus via the fornix to the hypothalamus, the amygdala via stria terminalis to the hypothalamus. And then the uh, two primary centers within the hypothalamus involved in parasympathetic and sympathetic output, and they have tracts from them that descend into the midbrain and the spinal cord. So these major uh, autonomic centers within the hypothalamus are composed of a number of different nuclei, but in general we can talk about the parasympathetics, which are more anterior and more toward the midline, and the sympathetic nuclei, which are more posterior and more lateral in the hypothalamus. And so, as you already know, parasympathetics are, are regulating uh, the rest and, and relax type of functionality, uh, rest and digest. Uh, so they're going to reduce blood pressure, increase peristalsis, reduce heart rate, uh, constrict the pupil, those sorts of functions. Sympathetic is going to do the, uh, mainly the opposite. Now, you, you tend to think of these as in opposition to each other, but that's not always the case. So you, in many cases, you can have the sympathetics and parasympathetics working together to regulate a certain activity. Uh, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, it is um, a, a good analogy uh, that these are kind of an opposite uh, because they have opposite functions on things like the heart and blood pressure, uh, pupillary di uh, dilation, uh, those sorts of things. So <clears throat> there are a number of different uh, hypothalamic nuclei uh, that we're going to be talking about, uh, and uh, we'll talk about them here in relation to their outputs to the pituitary. So we have the two here in blue that output to the anterior pituitary. So these are the preoptic and arcuate. The supraoptic and paraventricular are outputting to the posterior uh, pituitary. And then we have um, some other uh, uh, functions related to uh, drive and motivation and, and memory limbic functions, those sorts of things. So let's take a look at uh, 
output to the posterior pituitary because it's the most um, uh, intuitive, I, I should say, because the posterior um, pituitary gets direct uh, neural innervation from these nuclei. So uh, we have uh, cell bodies, for instance, in the paraventricular nucleus or the superoptic nucleus uh, that have fibers that extend through the infundibulum to synapse on um, neurons, nuclei, uh, uh, cell bodies of the posterior pituitary gland. Uh, after synapsing, it causes uh, the cells in the posterior pituitary to release hormones into the um, circumventricular circulation, uh, the hypophysial, uh, hypophys bleh, uh, hypophysial veins uh, that circulate, uh, that are embedded within the posterior pituitary. And so those hormones like uh, the antidiuretic hormone or oxytocin uh, then uh, get released into the bloodstream and have their effects on their distant target organs. The anterior pituitary is a little bit different because we have uh, nuclei within the hypothalamus uh, that uh, uh, send their projections not to the anterior pituitary but to the median eminence. The median eminence contains uh, vasculature which direct, is directed toward the anterior pituitary. So the targets of the uh, hypothalamus for the anterior pituitary is actually the median eminence. The cells in the median eminence then release um, releasing hormones or inhibitory hormones that travel a short distance through the bloodstream to the anterior pituitary. And then those releasing hormones or inhibiting hormones trigger a reaction in the anterior pituitary, and then the anterior pituitary releases hormones into uh, the portal veins, uh, the systemic circulation. So um, some of the hormones uh, related to the anterior pituitary are things like uh, the thyroid stimulating hormone or uh, uh, growth hormone for bone growth, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, um, just this, this uh, general concept uh, uh, where we have differences in the anterior and posterior pituitary, the anatomical structures, the median eminence, and the portal veins, the uh, hypophysial veins, those are the important things for uh, an anatomical discussion of the hypothalamus. Now let's talk about the neural connections of the hypothalamus to the hypothalamus, the things that are inputting on the hypothalamus. First, we have the corticohypothalamic uh, tracts from the septal limbic area of the prefrontal cortex. Uh, so those project back uh, via the corticohypothalamic tract. Um, then we'll, I'll talk about the amygdala. So it's projections to the hypothalamus via the stria terminal, ta terminalis. So uh, regulating our autonomic reflexes based on our emotional sense of what's going on around us at any given time. So for example, the, the fear response is going to stimulate a fight or flight response from the hypothalamus and release the appropriate hormones to do that. You don't need to be spending energy um, digesting food uh, if you are in a fight or flight fearful mode. So that's the functionality there. The hippocampus is going to project to the hypothalamus via the fornix, uh, which we've talked about. Uh, so it is going to um, inform the... So for instance, we, ha we experience a memory of a given event, and that memory has emotional components to it that change our autonomic functionality at the time based on our remembering the uh, remembrance of the event. So, you know, to the extreme, case, the extreme case is uh, something like post-traumatic stress disorder where you completely relive a traumatic memory uh, and that triggers changes in your hormone balance and your autonomic responses. And so the fornix, when we remember something, can uh, trigger these autonomic changes in our body based on that memory so that uh, 
uh, you know, we remember a positive event, we have, we can relive the positive um, emotional experiences of that uh, to um, predispose us to seek out that same event again. Or if we have a negative uh, uh, type of inner memory, then it causes us to, uh, when we think of it, we want to avoid that uh, same memory, the same events that led to that memory. So these are very important uh, functions related to memory and our proclivities to relive those memories. So the uh, anterior and medial parasympathetic nuclei also output to the rest of our bodies uh, via specific tracts. And the first of these we'll talk about uh, are some of the tracts of the medial forebrain bundle. So the MFB contains a number of different uh, uh, fibers, um, including dopaminergic fibers, um, as well as the um, cortical hypothalamic fibers from the septal area. Uh, so let's not belabor that though. Right now, we're just talking about the uh, fibers from the medial forebrain bundle that innervate the brainstem nuclei involved in the parasympathetic response. So for instance, the uh, fibers to the accessory oculomotor motor nucleus which are going to cause a uh, muscular contraction that is going to constrict the pupil of the eye, uh, pupillary constriction through accessory oculomotor nucleus. So the hypothalamus ultimately controls that output, uh, controls without conscious awareness, the constriction of our pupil through this tract, the MFB. So the MFB continues downward, so all of these tracts coming from the hypothalamus are continuing down via the uh, DLF, the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus, to the other uh, medullary brainstem, uh, parasympathetic brainstem nuclei to have their functions on, for instance, salivation and um, um, the, the uh, peristalsis of the uh, gut down uh, eventually through the, par the um, parasympathetic vagus nerve to regulate heart rate, etc., etc. Uh, so there you have that. Uh, the DLF continues down as the hypothalamospinal tract to the, um, the um, thoracic uh, IML sympathetic fibers. And so this is how we have the sympathetic functionality regulated by the hypothalamus, uh, ultimately giving way to all of the sympathetic functions, but especially here I'm outlining how these tracts extend up the neck to the superior uh, cervical ganglion uh, to produce the uh, sympathetic functions of the head. So of course these are traveling up and down the spinal cord and the paravertebral ganglia, uh, also called the sympathetic chain to have all of their functions, but in particular, I'm outlining these uh, to change the heart rate and to have that paras the uh, sympathetic function in the head. So how can uh, activity of the hypothalamus change? And of course, that involves uh, generally strokes in uh, various blood vessels. And the hypothalamus uh, receives branches from the entire circle of Willis. Uh, so you can see here, the different areas uh, of the hypothalamus outlined in different colorations based on the branches. So the ACA is going to perforate the hypothalamus to supply preoptic and superoptic areas. Uh, so etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You can read through this list uh, and and get that information. But just understand that these very small branches branching off from any point, uh, pretty much in the circle of Willis or even the internal carotid artery, are going to potentially result in dysregulation of our autonomic nervous system. And these are conditions that are frequently overlooked. Um, you know, patients don't really uh, have a good sense when their pupils aren't dilating correctly or over dilating. Uh, you know, they may just get sensitivity to light, to the high uh, light levels. Uh, so these are, um, tend to be um, more minor symptoms, especially when they happen as a stroke. Uh, so a lot of these hormones regulate growth 
uh, and sexual maturity. So once you've reached the adulthood time where strokes occur, then um, these, these functions are, are less readily apparent in the adult. Uh, but they still can have uh, strong effects, including uh, syncope from dysregulation of the heart rate, such as um, uh, postural orthostatic tachycardia, uh, where you're, the change in your body orientation your uh, sympathetic nervous system doesn't regulate your heart rate, effectively leading to um, uh, fainting episodes. So a number of different functions can be uh, impacted by these strokes in these smaller branches. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's as much as I want to tell you about the hypothalamus. I'm not into the physiology and the hormones of it. You'll get that in a physiology class. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the short little lecture, uh, and I'll see you next time.